Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam May June 2021, paper 61. Let's just start it. Question 1. Many indicators are colored substance obtained from plants. A student extracted the colored substance of some berries using the method shown. Name the apparatus labeled A, B, and C. A is a mortar, B is a tripod stand, and C is a filter funnel. The student analyzed the color solution using chromatography. Complete the diagram to show where is the spot of the color solution should be placed on the paper and the level of the solvent in the paper. Here is the spot of the color solution. It should be placed on the baseline drawn in a pencil. And this line here represents the level of the solvent. It should be below the baseline. Why pencil is used to draw the baseline on the chromatography paper? Because pencil is not soluble in the solvent, so it will not interfere with the results. C. The student made two chromatograms after chromatography. One chromatogram was dipped in dilute hydrochloric acid and the other one dipped in aqueous sodium hydroxide. Here is the one on the left dipped with dilute hydrochloric acid and the one on the right dipped in sodium hydroxide. Determine the number of colored spots in the solution obtained from the berries. Here we have two colored spots. The table gives the colors of some indicator in acid and alkali. Here we have list of indicator and color change in both acid and alkali media. Use the data in the table and the result here above in the chromatogram to show which possible indicator could be here used in this experiment. Here we have two results, one red in acid and blue in alkali media and the second one blue in acid and green in the alkali media. So these two results, yellow and purple, is cancelled and we have only option here. One option is anthocyanin that gives red color in acid, blue in alkali media and this result matches here the chromatogram colors. Question 2. A student investigates the temperature decrease when sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. Student make six experiments. Experiment 1. Using a measuring cylinder 25 cm3 dilute hydrochloric acid, poured into conical flask, and we record the uh, initial temperature. Then, one gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate was added to the conical flask, and we start the stopwatch. We measure the temperature with thermometer. The temperature of the mixture after one minute was measured. Then the student repeats the experiment using two gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate, then three, five grams, six, and last one is seven gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Use the thermometer diagram to complete the label and calculate the temperature decrease. Here, six experiment using the mass of uh, hydrogen, sodium hydrogen carbonate, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Then we have to record the thermometer reading at the beginning of the experiment. It's the initial temperature and then the final temperature. And the temperature decrease is the difference between the two readings here. 22 minus 19.5 is 2.5 and so on until complete the table. Here the final experiment, 7 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate gives 9 degrees decrease in temperature. Blot the results are from the experiment 1 to 6 on the grid. We have to draw two best fit straight lines through your points. The first straight line should be for the first three points and must pass through the point zero, 0, and the second straight line should be for the last three points and must be horizontal. Extend your straight lines so they will meet with each other or intersect with each other. So here I draw the first three points. Here is the first one, second one, and the third, third one. And this is the line of best fit that 
go through this point zero zero and here is the last three points one two three and both line intersect here at this point from your graph determine the temperature decrease and the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate where your straight two straight lines meet include appropriate unit for your answer here is the point at which the two straight lines intersect or meet with each other we will go down by this red line to determine the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate used it is 3.6 gram and here is the temperature decrease which is 9 degrees celsius so here the answer will be temperature decrease 9 degrees and the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate 3.6 grams and you have to show your work on the graph so you have to draw these two lines representing the point of the 3.6 gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate and the 9 degrees uh, on the y-axis for temperature difference explain why the temperature decrease becomes constant for the high mass of sodium carbonate here after 3.6 grams all increase in mass of sodium carbonate gives the same difference in temperature which which is 9 degrees celsius this that's why that's because all the acid reacted all all the acid used up the investigation was repeated with dilute hydrochloric acid with half concentration but is the same volume sketch on the grid for your graph what would you expect the result and label your new line D. The first concentration of the acid react with 3.6 gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So if we use half the concentration, we will use only 1.8 gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate. After this mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate, the, all the acid will be used up and no more acid to react. So we will go to our curve here determine the point in which the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate will be 1.8 gram then start to draw the curve here the curve will be the same until this point 1.8 when all the acid reacted then we will have a straight line represent the same temperature decrease which is 4.5 because all the acid have been used up or all the acid have been reacted here the first part of the curve is the same starting from 0 until this point 1.8 then we will draw a straight line represented by this green line and we will label D here you have to notice that we blot the temperature degrees the temperature decrease against the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate so it is the same decrease in temperature for each mass of hydrogen carbonate so we will have the same results of the first curve the first curve <coughs> until the point of 1.8 gram sodium hydrogen carbonate then we will have a straight line after all the acid have used up Question E suggests two changes that could be made for the apparatus to improve the accuracy of the result. For each change, explain why it would improve the accuracy of the result. Change 1, we should use pipette or purette to measure dilute hydrochloric acid because they are more accurate measure than the measuring cylinder. Change 2, using polystyrene cup because it's insulated and it will reduce the heat loss. Questions 3. Solid E and Solution F were analyzed. Tests were done on each substance. First, test on solid E. Test 1. About half of solid E was placed in a test tube and heated gently. The observation is steam was given off and condensation appeared near the mouth of test tube. Here, this observation means that we have hydrated crystals or hydrated salt where the water of crystallization or water of hydration 
evaporates and condenses on the mouth of the test tube. The remaining solid E was dissolved in distal water and produce solution E. The solution was divided into four equal parts. Test 2, 1 cm of dilute nitric acid was followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate on the first portion of solution E and the observation no visible change or no reaction. That means we have no halide ions because silver nitrate is used to test for halide ions. No observation, so there is no halide ion in this solution. Test 3. About 1 cm of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate were added to the second portion. The observation is white precipitate, so this indicates the presence of sulfate anions and the white precipitate is barium sulfate. Test 4. Excess aqueous ammonia was added to the third portion and the observation was white precipitate. Test 5. Aqueous sodium hydroxide added dropwise then added in excess to the fourth portion of solution E, white precipitate, which dissolve in excess to form colorless solution. Here we have hydroxide that is soluble in excess sodium hydroxide, but is not soluble in excess ammonia. So this hydroxide is aluminium hydroxide, and this represents the presence of aluminium cations. The product on test 5 was warming gently and then the gas given off tested on damp red, red litmus paper and the red litmus paper turns into blue and this indicates that this gas is ammonia gas. State the conclusion that can be made from observation in test 1. Observation 1 is steam and condensation appear on the mouth of the test tube and this indicates that this is a hydrated salt. State the conclusion that can be made from observation 2. No visible change with silver nitrate, so there is no halide ions. Identify the three ions present in solid E. Here we have three ions. The first one, sulfate, and the second one, as we said, aluminium. The third one here, that when heated gives ammonia gas, is ammonium ions. So the three ions will be sulfate, aluminium, and ammonium ions. Then test on solution F. Solution F with aqueous sodium hydroxide complete the expected observation. A flame test was carried on solution F. Here a flame test with sodium gives yellow color. The remaining solution F was divided in two equal portions into two test tubes. To the first portion of solution F, a few drops of universal indicator were added. Solution F is sodium hydroxide, so it's a very strong alkali. It will give blue color with universal indicator or purple color. The second portion of the solution F, approximately 2 cm cube of aqueous copper sulfate was added. Copper sulfate would, would react with sodium hydroxide. It will give copper hydroxide precipitate, which is blue precipitate. So the observation will be blue Question 4. Dilute hydrochloric acid react with calcium carbonate to make carbon dioxide gas. The apparatus shown in the diagram can be used to follow the progress of reaction. The carbon dioxide gas leaves the flask causing the mass shown on the balance to decrease. Plan an investigation using the apparatus shown in the diagram to find out how the temperature of the dilute hydrochloric acid affects the rate of reaction. Your plan should include how the result will show that the temperature of dilute hydrochloric acid affect the rate of reaction. You are provided with dilute hydrochloric acid, calcium carbonate, and common laboratory apparatus. Here, to do this investigation, we will carry out two experiments at two different temperatures and compare between the results obtained to know the effect of temperature on the reaction. We can calculate the rate of reaction by calculating the decrease in mass of a calcium carbonate in both experiment or calculate the rate of reaction by the time needed for the reaction to finish. We can calculate either way to uh, know the difference between the two reactions. Here, use 30 millimeter 
of hydrochloric acid measured by the burette and weight 10 gram of calcium carbonate by measuring balance, add them in the conical flask and record the initial mass. Use the stopwatch to calculate the time needed for the reaction to finish. We know that the reaction finished when the bubbling stop or the release of carbon dioxide gas stop until the reaction stop or until the mass stop changing on the balance. Then repeat the experiment using the same volume of the acid and the same concentration, the same mass of calcium carbonate, but at higher temperature. Then again, record the time until the reaction stops. We can compare between the time needed for the reaction to finish in the first and the second experiment. The experiment that ends in a shorter time, this has the highest, highest rate of reaction. We can use another way to calculate the decrease in mass in the first experiment by subtracting the initial mass minus the final mass. Then do the experiment again at higher temperature and again calculate the decrease in mass. And the experiment that has the highest decrease in mass means it has the highest rate of reaction. Here we come to the end of our exam. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for the channel. Comment down below if you have any question. Thank you all. Wish you all best of luck.